YouTube. Teacher Tiffany with you today to talk about guided reading groups. Um, I have been learning a lot about guided reading groups uh, ever since I started teaching. I feel like every year I just continue to refine my guided reading groups so they are in no way perfect or foolproof, but I feel like I have some pretty good um, tips and pieces of advice to offer you guys about guided reading groups. So here I am at my guided reading group table and I'm just going to kind of outline for you guys the things that I keep back here uh, and how often I do guided reading groups and kind of break that down for you. So I do guided reading groups every day. Um, I am blessed enough to have a co-teacher that pulls groups three times a week. So she takes the higher two groups three days a week and then I take the lower two groups daily. Um, things that I include at my table. I have a bucket of pencils and erasers so kids don't need to fuss with bringing their personal pencils back here. I have a light that I put on when I'm at group. It's just a good visual for the kids when it's working. And when the light is on, the teacher is busy. I have a timer, but I haven't used it that much, to be honest and my doorbell clicker that signifies transitions. Um, off to the side over here, I'm gonna grab an example of one. I have magnet boards. This is for uh, building letters. I use these a lot, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, I really like how the vowels are in red and the consonants are in blue. It's just a good visual. And then I also have I'm just going to pull out one drawer um, with letter cards, so that's another way to build letters, and I have one a drawer, obviously, for every letter in the alphabet. I also keep back here with me, uh, it's like a blue caddy with whiteboards and whiteboard markers, because I use those a lot. Uh, we use mini post-its a lot during lessons to like mark pages or write notes or something, so I always keep this back here and a caddy with a variety of writing tools such as markers and highlighters. And then I have two tendra rolling carts. So I'll try to position you in a way where you can see them. Okay, so this rolling cart's for reading. This rolling cart is for math. Each drawer has something different in it. I house my reading materials for each group in a folder that looks like this. It has their names on the front. Each group gets a different color. And then on the inside, um, we have a subscription to the Reading A to Z. I would highly recommend it, or at least look into seeing if your school could purchase it or already have it. Um, it's great for the lower level readers. Um, so I have our books and the accompanying worksheets, and then my reading lesson plans um, template that I use. I got this off of a literacy book. I forget the name of it. The Next Steps in Guided Literacy or something like that by Jan Richardson. And at the back of the book, it has a bunch of reproducibles, and lesson plans are one of them. So I love these. They're super straightforward. It just takes me a few minutes to fill them in. Um, and then the lesson plan that goes with the story, um, I just highlight the things I want to touch on each day. Because let's be real, I'm not about to do all of this. I think it's bad. Um, that's what's in the first drawer, is my plans and the books that we're reading. Second drawer is our opening activity. So I love the fry words list. Um, I bought these at Dollar Store. They're just little like recipe card holders, but I use them for flashcards. Each color is a different level. Um, so this is level one, and I just hand wrote, which took me forever. I'm sure you can print these in color. Um, all the different words and I just flip through them. Um, speed, fluency, that's what this reinforces and the kids love it. When they get it right, they get the, to keep the card. Um, and we just whip through them. If neither of them get them right, I keep the card. Is how we play that game. So it's really short and the kids like it. A few other things that I have in here. 
flashcards for our vowel sounds. Our friends need to review those. Um, we have these word list books that I do with the kids. They just have all of our sight words they need to know for the year. When they get it right, they get a star. If they get three stars, they're done with that word. So if we have time, I assess them on those. Tic-tac-toe sight word version. We play that sometimes. So these are just fun games um, that we use to kind of open reading and settle into reading. And then I do my reading lesson. Um, and then after that, I have a follow-up like phonics activity or um, working with some sort of phonics skill. So currently, we're doing these vowel books. Each tab has a different vowel. When they turn to a page, they have to fill in the vowel sound and glue it. Um, so I have some sort of a project that we're working on that usually takes a few group times to get through it. Um, I keep sound boxes in here. This is another great word work tool to have. They just use a whiteboard marker and I say, okay, we're going to use three boxes to spell this word and, and then they spell it out in the boxes. Uh, it's a really great visual for first graders. I also have the ABCs, upper and lower case, and then an accompany, accompanying picture. Visuals always help. Um, and then I have individual sight word baggies. Um, again, I just go by the fry words list. It just seems like a pretty good general list to use. Although my curriculum does provide a list, I've just always used these and I like them. Um, so I found this on TPT for free. It was just fry sight words list and um, the kids cut them out. I quiz them, the ones they already know, like right away when I show them, I keep. If they have to sound it out or they have any sort of pause, they keep it. Um, they put their initials on the back so it doesn't get mixed up with somebody else's and they practice these every day. Um, and then I quiz them on them every day. Um, again, this isn't with the whole class. This is just with the babies that I'm trying to get to grade level. And then of course, when they're getting down to just a few words, I print off the next set of words for them. They cut those out, we repeat. I also have fluency passages. So they have to read the passage three times, they have to illustrate it, circle certain sight words. Great for fluency, great for comprehension, great for memorizing those sight words that they're working on in their fry words bag. And I have drawers with reading tools in them and I have to get up to get them so I'm not going to. But we have in there like little wands that the kids can use. Uh, I have little like googly eyes that they can keep on their finger and use to point to the words. Just fun ways to engage them and make reading really fun for them. Um, I also have directly behind me our strategies to sound out words. So those are the strategies that we've learned so far. They reference that poster a lot when I have them read independently and they're having a tricky time with a word. I see a lot of kids look up at these posters and say, oh, I haven't tried this strategy yet, um, and they'll use it. So that is super useful. I also keep a caddy. I don't know if you can see it. Um, a purple caddy with scissors, glue, and markers because we use those materials a lot, and I keep them right by my table. I just have a student grab them for me. Um, so it's really nice to have all of the items that I need accessible by my table so I'm not having to get up and down. It just makes that transition into group really smooth. Having a lot of time filler activities is super helpful, like I showed you with the flashcards. Um, <coughs> having a phonics component and a flow to um, getting through your book. We read our book every day for a week. And then the nice thing about the paper books is at the end of the week when we're done with the book, they get to keep it in their book box and continue to read it, which definitely boosts those little readers' confidence because they're familiar with the book already, they read it with me, and then I'm able to send them off to do it on their own. 
So those are a few things that I do for guided reading. Uh, my guided reading groups last 20 minutes a piece and the kids are able to maintain stamina the whole time, which is really great. I love my literacy component of the school day. It's a lot of fun and the students love it too. So if you have any questions or comments about any of the materials I just showed you, drop it in the comments below. Otherwise, best of luck and I will see you next time.